Tuesday thoughts. I'm frozen at the moment. There we are. Now we're back. We're playing again. Tuesday thoughts. I was watching the Greta Thunberg documentary, which is in two parts on BBC, last night, nine o'clock. This 16-year-old girl is an absolute inspiration. And it's only by watching the programme that I find out that she is autistic as well. It doesn't go into which part of the spectrum of autism that she's on. I suspect it may be Asperger's. And it shows her talent, her superpower of the concentration and the absolute devotion to her focus on the subject in hand for her. She is a powerful, powerful person, a powerful being. And she's causing a big ripple. In fact, it's not a ripple, it's a wave. And it could become a tsunami, hopefully, of good things to come for climate change. I was struck, however, and intensely disappointed, even although not surprised, at what happened when she went to America. One of the most powerful countries in the world, in fact, as far as they're concerned, the only powerful country in the world, let's face it. And it's understandable that they don't like the idea, some of them don't like the idea of what's going on with this little girl's ideas and what she's actually talking about. Because America is built on fossil fuel, as is Canada, particularly Alberta. She didn't get a 100% a, a good reception there, but they were a little bit more civil, civilised about it, than when she went to America. Of course, Mr. Orange President Trump was on because this happened in 2018, 2019, I think it was, just before this carry on with the pandemic began. This little girl, 16 years old, standing on a stage in America, she'd been invited to go there to speak on climate change on her subject, her passion. And they showed the Twitter feeds of what people in America were saying to her. Now it's on BBC iPlayer, you should watch it, please do. And see this mentality that goes on from people directed towards a 16 year old girl who's actually speaking her truth in a country that prides itself on free speech and the ability, the freedom and rights of the individual to speak their truth. But it seems that they can only do that if it's a truth that everybody likes and everybody else approves of. Otherwise, one of the tweets said, kill yourself. Now, this is a massive scale cyberbullying. It comes from fear. It also comes from being so insulated and isolated in their thinking. It's absolutely terrifying when you think about it. This is a nuclear power. And these people in 2019, in the 21st century, cannot see the wood for the trees. None of us can really at the moment. I've been speaking with my husband about all this taking away of the, the glaciers, of the calving off and the, the glaciers melting into the sea, all these things that are coming off. And I said to him, 
Surely people like Elon Musk, etc., could be looking at ways, instead of going to Mars and repopulating another planet and screwing it up, why don't we fix the problem that we've got here and now? Use all these resources that you have to collect and gather this ice and take it perhaps to desert areas and turn the deserts into forests. Reclimatize the deserts by taking the ice away from where it is. It would perhaps, and this is naive, I know, it would perhaps aid in the stopping of desalination of the seas. It might stop or actually slow the rising of sea levels because you're taking all that water and putting it into a place where it's going to be useful and the amount of forest fires that we have throughout the world at the moment still burning it could be used there too we need to redress a balance and instead of just sitting around on our backsides contemplating our navels and thinking about it the people in power who could be and have the resources to do it could actually be thinking on more practical levels perhaps those were my Tuesday thoughts I will be watching the second part of Greta's documentary I think I'm a little bit starstruck because this is one little girl and she found a voice and it's her generation that are going to have to live with what happens next with this world if we get to do that at all we can't stay blind we can't stay deaf and we can't stay dumb if we want to survive we have to get real we have to deal with the necessities the bare necessities of what we need and that's not oil it might not even be electric cars because they have their own problems what do you do with the batteries afterwards but cars can be run on water it's been done the patent is out there Jeremy Clarkson drove one once on Top Gear and its byproduct is oxygen so let's look at that let's wonder about what we can do practically plant more trees well that's another thing that kind of thinking about how can you be a hundred percent carbon neutral as a company that would mean that every single person that works for you has to also be carbon neutral how do they get to work are you providing them with electric cars are you fully solar energy where do you get your tea from and how does it get into your factory Or are you saying that you offset that by planting a tree somewhere that will take so many years to actually grow and in that time somebody might find oil underneath there and dig it up or coal or gas? How can you guarantee carbon neutrality? Just a thought. 